Hello, hello. We are live to paint our craft kit of the month. Let me flip this around real quick. Just to say hello, I'm in my little craft room here. There's the wall. We're gonna have Julie's wood crafts put on the wall. As soon as I remember to get some double-sided mounting tape to stick it up there. Um, but this is my little corner. Look, it's one of my husband's posters. I'm gonna have to take that down. Anybody else have a husband who's a Tron nerd? Or maybe one yourself? It's like his all-time favorite movie and video game. and all that so anyways um we are ready to get started for our craft kit of the month whether you're watching this live oh i got some fuzzy hair it was hot in the workshop today i had to come home and take a shower but didn't have time to wash my hair so it's still looking a little rough but um anyways if you're watching this live or if you're watching the replay comment say hello um but we're gonna get started unpack your box get all your stuff out um, your paint, your brushes, all of that, and I think we're ready to go. All right, let's see if we're looking at the right spot there. Oh, excuse my sniffles tonight. pretty good I think we'll be able to see everything I might come this way a little bit actually I'm gonna go grab a tissue too so I'm not sniffling all over the place don't go anywhere Jeffy, you gonna come paint with me today? Okay, buddy. You can paint. I got Jeffy, my beautiful boxer pup here with me. Uh, let me get my apron on. He is a sweet boy. And he took our hang out with us tonight. I always tell him he's my good buddy. All right, so make sure you got something you can get dirty or put an apron on, just be careful. Um, cup of water to put your wet paint brushes in if you wanna save them for later. And uh, something to squeeze your paint out on. I have these little, bless you, Jeffy. Just these little wood pieces, you know, scraps from around the shop. So something to squeeze your paint out of your pouches onto. So make sure you got all your pieces here. I'm gonna go ahead and move them out of the way because y'all know we got to start with the background first all right so open your white paint pouch you're going to use your sorry buddy sorry buddy you're going to use your um foam one handled brush so grab out your white paint pouch and we're going to go ahead and just squeeze it on here. Oh, y'all don't have to work on these sniffles, y'all. Don't nobody want to be listening to that all night. You might, there might not be other options. Oh, I treated myself to a massage today. And I just got home from it like 15 minutes ago. And um, that my sniffles started during the massage. So, must have released something good. It was a good massage. So squeeze out um, your paint pouch. You've probably got two, um, unless we're able to give you one big one. Don't squeeze it all out. Squeeze maybe one paint pouch or something to begin with. And then you're just gonna start spreading it out. Woo, so I know I made a post and a few of y'all already commented about this ridiculous heat wave. Like we are getting some like August level heat, y'all. 
Oh my gosh. The workshop was nuts today. The heat, I was just sweating because we're getting ready for our workshop sale. The inventory clearance sale helped me not have to move as much stuff. I'd rather sell it cheap there, move less, and then when I get to the new workshop, have to make some more if I have to make some more. Um, so we were getting ready, setting up for that. And so there was a lot of moving and dusting and tagging and I didn't get everything done before I had to go that I wanted to get done. So now I got to get back into the workshop in the morning. Um, I'm trying to get there at eight, but y'all, I am not a morning person <laughs> and the sale starts at 10 and I definitely have like some probably two hours worth of stuff to do to get ready for it. If y'all live anywhere close to Cartersville, the sale is Friday and Saturday. This is June 16th. So June 17th and 18th. I mean, if you're watching a replay, I don't want you to show up to the workshop at some other random Saturday. Um, so it's this Friday and Saturday, uh, 10 to 4 on Friday and 10 to 2 on Saturday. And I've got a good bit of stuff. There's a lot of stuff for like DIYers like yourself. Um, a lot of shapes and things. Like if you want uh, the square home signs where the O is just like a big circle. And you can do the little interchangeables for the O. I got some of those. I got lots of words. So if you've got some ideas for using word decor around your house, I got lots of words. Smaller to kind of like average side words are like one and two dollars, right? I mean, then I've got some that are like 30 inches and 36 inches. I have a lot of larger blessed signs. And those always retail for like 18 to like 20 something dollars. Um, but those are just going to be five bucks for the bigger ones. I'm pretty sure the new puppy wants to come in. Petey. <laughs> he wants to come in. Not for me. He wants to play with his brother, Jeffy. They have become good play buds. I mean, they don't get crazy when they play because Jeffy's a little bit older and he's bigger. So Jeffy gets to kind of tell him like, hey, hey, dude, this is how we're going to play. So they don't get crazy like some dogs can knock their stuff over and make tons of noise. And they're pretty good play dogs. Okay, so if this is your first time you've done one of these, sometimes you get what I call paint boogers. This is these little like rubbery kind of pieces. I just wipe them off with my finger, either wipe it on my apron or wipe it on a little paper towel you've got. And you are gonna feel like all those nice little lines that I etched for you to help you glue on. I'm squeezing out all the extra paint on my brush. Um, you're gonna feel like, oh no, I'm covering this up. I'm not gonna see anything. I promise you, once it dries, you will still be able to see them. So don't worry about that. And we're going to do two coats on the white. White always takes two coats. Extra perfectionist sometimes will take three. Some days that's me. I'm not feeling like it's going to be me today. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. That is not cute. <laughs> Oh, y'all, that is rough. It's getting worse. <laughs> I'm like, uh, got worse ready to go now. All right, find a place to set your round so it can dry a little bit. We're going to start working on some of the pieces. Then we're going to come back and put the second coat on the round. know what happened. Is there allergies now? Like, you don't even know we have allergies in June, right? It's like a spring thing. <coughs> oh, y'all, I'm sorry. Might have to take an intermission. I mean, I feel fine. I feel great. <laughs> Alright, let's start on what is blue. All right, so all of the word beach is blue, along with one of the beach chairs. 
So, um, of course, you can, you know, use your colors the way you like. Um, you have to kind of look at how much paint's in there, though, because we tend to put the appropriate amount of paint for the way, you know, we've chosen to paint it. All right, so for us, our plans were for a beach and one of the chairs. So grab out one of your little wedge sponges. We're going to use that. Now, if you've done this quite a few months, then you've stockpiled some of these foam wood handled brushes. I mean, if you clean them off, they're great for multiple uses. So you can always grab one of those from previous craft kit of the month. And you could use those if you prefer them. I really do not mind using these little sponges. All right, so open up your blue paint pouch. Um, if you got a paper plate or something that you're squeezing it out on, squeeze out a little bit for yourself. Or a lot of it, if you're me. <laughs> Y'all see, I can see in the top corner of the video. There's Jeffy. You want to go out, Betty? You go out the door now? <laughs> okay, sweet boy. Did you say hi? I'll let you out now. You regret your decision, huh? There you go. You can go see Peavy. <laughs> He's so polite. He would never bark. He'll just stand there and stare at the door. Um, I think I'm going to use a skinny and yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, so I am thinking I'm going to try to do a really good uh, first coat. Meaning like I'm going to try to keep it real even, but not real thick. And I probably am going to end up with only one coat. I really like these colors in one coat, um, one even coat, and then you can kind of see the wood grain through them a little bit, because all these colors are bright, so they're still gonna look bright, even if you just do one coat. Um, the only key to doing one coat is making sure you don't miss any spots the first go around. And of course, you can always change your mind. <clears throat> and do a second coat later if needed. But I'm just going to work on trying to do a really good first coat. So that's what mine looks like. One of the keys if you've done a bunch of these is you know that you need to be careful because if you're like me, you probably like keep, keeping the edges, this nice dark laser color. So you just want to be careful when you've got paint here, especially when it's like heavy paint, like I just dipped it. I don't want to run against the edge because it's just going to swipe all that paint off. So I'm going to, you know, work on it like this here and kind of go with the direction of the letter. So I'm not going against any of the sides because if I come against one of the sides, it's just going to scrape all that paint off. But also, worst case scenario, if it does that, use a finger, wipe it off, wipe it off by your paper towel, um, or don't worry about it. Like It's okay if a little paint gets on the edge. I promise nobody's looking at the edges on your door hanger. And if they come over to your house and look at the edges of the letters on your door hanger and then have the nerve to say something to you about it, you don't need people like that in your life anyways. Maybe somebody to say, like, girl, that is a beautiful door hanger. You made that? You're amazing. Those are the people you need in your life. That's what I love about these all these DIY kits, too, is I love that y'all get to tell people when they come over or when you gift it to somebody, you get to say, I made this. And you did. It was, you know, tell them that you got the wood cutouts, whatever. You made it. You painted it. You put it together. You made it. I think that's really great. Just makes you feel nice when someone tells you something's cute and you're like, oh, thanks. I made it. It's almost like when someone tells you your dress is cute and you're like, ah, it has pockets. 
Almost exciting as getting to tell someone your dress has pockets is like getting to tell somebody that you made something they just complimented you on. It's not quite as cool and as exciting as getting to tell them something has pockets. Close second though. Close second. All right, I'm pretty happy with that one. We got a BEA. Oh, sorry. Y'all, I'm gonna keep saying sorry. I'm not normally the person who's like, I'm like, quit apologizing. But if y'all gotta hear me <laughs> blow up my nose 10 times on this live today, I feel like you you deserve it. I'm sorry. I am sorry, ladies, divas. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I have to listen to it. Oh, that seems easy. I tried to. Um, I'm better at this now. I used to not be good at it have a paper towel like sitting right next to me so like every time I'm done with a letter I try to wipe it off because you don't even realize you get it on your fingers and then you go to grab the next letter especially if you're like you're grabbing something that's a different color so and you get that color on it so I'm trying to do a good job of like dabbing my fingers off and every changeover make it more a habit of mine because I can't tell you how many times. I'm sure y'all have done it too if you have been with the craft kit with us for a while. Hang on, it's my mom. Hey, Keith. My mom just called. Would you call her back for me? Just tell her I'm doing my lap paint. So she'll think I'm in order. Right? You know. God take your mom's calls. Or in this case, God make your husband call your mom back when you can't take your mom's calls. Alright. I mean, that one is good. I'm liking them. Okay, Adirondack chair. Here we come. Yeah, definitely the skinny end was the right choice here. A lot of skinny parts. And if you're a bigger fan of the dabbing method, where you almost like, you know, dab on all the paint, then use the fat end, because you can do more at a time. But, kind of like using these little sponges, almost just like as a nice smooth paintbrush. Because they're really smooth. I suppose it's because they're meant for putting on like, I don't know, foundation or something. Is that a thing? Is foundation still a thing? It was when I was in high school. And that's probably the last time I, no, most assuredly. Oh wait, I probably had some on for my wedding day. I paid someone to do my makeup. <laughs> so that's probably the last time I ever had any of that on. But I imagine it would be good for that. Because it's kind of like paint, right? These little Adirondack chairs are adorable. I 
I definitely squirted out way too much blue. All right, so if you're gonna try to do the one coat method, just go back and take a look. Make sure you've got all the spots and don't leave any wood showing through. So I'm very lightly going over the top of this chair. So I'm getting a little paint on the end and then I'm just dabbing it off. So it's really not much, but that way we've got like a smooth paint surface on the base of the chair or the back of the chair, I guess I should say. All right, I think I've got all the spots. Pretty happy with that. So you can see, like my bee has dried now. I like it, um, being able to see the wood grain through there just a little bit. So, um, I mean, y'all can decide. I know you can't probably really see it so great on the video. But anyways, you get the idea. I'm going to stick with the one coat. I just like the look of it for this current door hanger, right? There are some of them I, I mean, y'all been with me before. Y'all know some of them I will do two or three coats because I want it really solid. All right, what we got next? Let's do our, let's do our flower and one of the chairs because the flower is going to be the coral color um, and the chair is going to be the coral color. So... Take out your flower, not your two leaves. Lift it up so that that center, just be really careful with it. Set it aside, the center is gonna be black. We're gonna paint these little balls on the end of the flower. We're gonna paint those black too, but all the rest of it's gonna be coral. Coral, and one of our chairs is coral. So, grab your coral paint pouch called Coral Cove. All right, I'm gonna skinny end this again. I was trying to see who's watching, but I forget what to click to see the list of names. But hello to the few of y'all watching now. And I know I met some ladies at the Geranium Festival in McDonough. Um, and I was like, you better comment on the next video you watch. And she said, I'm usually too busy making sure I don't miss a step. <laughs> so if y'all have a second, say hello. Let me know I'm not alone in the live paint internet black hole. All right, when I'm getting to these points in here, those I am kind of dabbing on, and they're just so skinny, it's hard to do a good job otherwise. Oh, pretty sure I just got, yep, yeah, coral paint on my face while trying to wipe my nose quality. Woo. So yeah, y'all who are close and can come to the workshop sale tomorrow, I would love to have you. There's some great deals. There's also project pieces. I mean, it's still great deals, but you know, things that we have messed up along the way or needed extra sanding and we stuck in a pile to like get to later, which y'all know how that can happen. And then the get to later part doesn't happen. <laughs> so, um, you know, we've set some of those out and like I have a, probably 10 vertical Mickey homes that at some space around the outside, there's like a, a lip that needs to be sanded when our router wasn't cutting things quite right and we were having some issues and, but it just a hand sand one in one place is not a big deal. It was like a stack of 10 that we had set to the side. And we didn't do it so sorry give me a sec but I'm selling them for five bucks you know and our Mickey home signs are normally 20 
So um, we've got those and you can just put a little elbow grease and just sand it off some of the spots around the edge that need it. But totally worth it, especially if you have some Disney loving friends, um, you know, get them for Christmas gifts and sometime between now and Christmas, take the time and get them done and um, you'll have a great gift that you made. You can tell them you made it. I'm like, okay, well, I bought a sign from Julie's Woodcraft, but I painted it for you. Um, and it'll be an awesome gift. So if you are close enough, and I know I had a few people ask, I wish I could ship as far, I mean, it, it would just be too much with us trying to move um, for me to also like then send out invoices and package and ship and um, we're trying to clean all this out so we can hopefully move into our new workshop in about a week or two. We're still waiting on the certificate of occupancy from the Bartow County, um, I don't know, inspector, I guess, or one of the Bartow County inspectors. So um, as soon as we get that, hopefully this next week, we can start moving stuff in. So we're just, I mean, it's just too busy for us to be able to ship stuff. I hate that, you know, y'all, I hate saying no to y'all. We're like, can you ship it? Um, it would just be too much for us right now. Now, if for some reason we get moved in, we like our new space and are getting comfortable in our new space and it comes into July or early August and we're not loaded down with planning ahead for fall and Christmas, you know, and I've still got some of that stuff left over in the DIY Divas group, you know, I will post there first and say, hey, I got these left, they didn't sell from the workshop sale. Um, Y'all want them, I'll ship. So definitely y'all will be first on my list if I do decide to do that. It's just not gonna be right now. Um, it would be later. We would go ahead and move it and then we could deal with that later. Okay, so on my flower, you might have saw me, I guess technically I did one coat, but I went over it twice pretty well. I wanted to make sure it was a good coat that it looked good. I'm so sorry, y'all have to listen to me sniffling. It was probably annoying. I could use some beach time for sure. This door hanger is perfect. Ooh, y'all know the other thing I'm gonna have to have you help with on my workshop. I posted a picture in the group. You can see we chose to point it point it, <laughs> paint it, a color called Sea Serpent. It's supposed to be a blue-gray. You can tell from the pictures. It's really mostly just blue. It's a dark, rich, pretty blue. It's what I wanted. I mean, I did want it to be a little bit grayer. And looking at the sample, it looked like it was a little bit grayer, but I'm not mad about it. Um, our house, and our workshop's built right next to our house, so our house has a red metal roof. So when we built the workshop, and let's be clear, I would not have chosen a red metal roof for my house. I didn't choose the roof, previous owners did. And metal roofs are fabulous and last forever and it's in great shape and so I would obviously not replace it. Like that would just be a silly waste of money. Um, so we have to work with what we got, right? Currently though, our house is red with a red roof. That's what the previous owners did to us. Isn't that crazy, y'all? Red metal roof, red house. Same color, like the same shade of red. Like that red metal roof, kind of like brick red. Yeah, it matches. So, we want to repaint the house forever. And there are only so many options you can go with when you've got a red roof. Um, I had to convince my husband that dark blue was one of those options. <laughs> But we also, on our workshop, got a red metal roof because the whole idea when the workshop's done, especially because it's so close to our house, it's not like on another piece of the, our property that's far away from a house, just like where the land was, there was only a couple of options to put um, the workshop. So it's right next to the house. So we really, really, really wanted to make it look like it was part of the house, like it was meant to be there. It went together. So, um, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to do a little more, like a nice little light. 
over the top here. You gotta keep it light though if you're gonna do big strokes like this over the whole thing because that's when, if it's, if you haven't dabbed some off, you got too thick a paint, that's where like these edges will catch it. They'll catch that extra paint. But anyway, so our workshop has a red metal roof, so it'll match the house. And after this is all said and done, we will paint the house to match the workshop. It's going to look all cute. But all that to say, I'm going to need y'all to help me pick out a door color on the workshop. I got two doors on there. I mean, the garage doors are going to be white, but I have like a, you know, like a person size door. I got two of those. I'm going to need y'all to help me figure those colors out. All right, let's do green. One chair. I'm going to be slow tonight, aren't I? I'm yapping up a storm. And sniffly. All right, get out your green. Oh, this is a new one. I'm going to bust open the plastic. Let's see if I can figure this out. Um, most of the green that y'all got is Anita's craft paint and it's, uh, lime, I think it is, but we ran out of that. Like there wasn't enough for us to do all the paint pouches. So some of y'all got this one, which is called Citron Green by Deco Art. Um, it's still a great one. It's really close to the lime from Anita's. Our go-to is just usually Anita's because we like it. All right, the green is the two leaves and another Adirondack chair. Now, one thing, um, part of the reason I really like the Anita's better is I think it's a thicker green so this one, especially if you got the, not that you know, because they're in pouches, right? But if it comes off kind of thin, you probably got this one, and it's going to need two coats. So this one, the Citron Green, it's just thin, and you can see, as soon as you put it on, it's not bright enough. I mean, maybe for you, right? You choose. It's your door hanger. But for me... I am putting a second coat on this one, even though I've been saying with the other ones, I didn't want to. Now, if you got the line, like if you're just going on kind of thick, you might be able to do just one coat of that one. So that's totally up to you. I mean, it's all up to you, right? Oh, I forgot we got to put a second coat on the round. We should do that next. Because then that needs time to dry before we start gluing stuff on. To plan this process well so we can get it all done in one sitting. Like if you don't do it in the right order, some things are still dry. I mean wet. Not ready to be glued together. You got to wait a little while. Of course, you can always pull out the hair dryer. That works. Hair dryer doesn't get hot enough to damage it, so, but it will definitely help it dry. All right. So I'm going to smooth that out, but I'm definitely going to want to come back for a second coat on that. Um, and now for the leaves. Oh, I forgot. I even had my little snacks from last night. When I came in here to do the live paint last night, realizing I had forgotten all these pieces. Of course, at the very last minute, I realized that. Everything's better with Junior Mints. Can you tell I went to the dollar and a quarter tree yesterday? Where these came from? No longer the dollar tree. 
Y'all, my son, one of my sons who is 22 years old, well, they're both 22, uh, but one of my 22-year-old sons called a few months ago. He was like, Mom, I should have to the Dollar Tree. Did you know it's not a dollar anymore? Poor kid. I mean, not a kid, right? But, like, he was like, this is ridiculous. He's like, it's ruined my entire memory of my childhood. Because when he was much younger, I was a single mom. Um, I would take him to the Dollar Tree near our apartment. Because it was like, I mean, I'm not alone in this, moms, I'm sure. It was a way to treat your kid, and they were so excited. And you were only spending a dollar. And some tax, right? But he was so funny. He was just torn up over that. Like, I cannot believe them. They were sitting around in some corporate meeting trying to decide can they go up to $1.25. Uh, it was funny. So, anyways, I call it the dollar and a quarter tree now. Alright, so let me forget, we're going back to paint the white round as soon as I'm done with this. There we go. There are my leaves. Let me kind of move this stuff out of the way. The last thing we have is to paint one of the chairs um, with our fuchsia color. <clears throat> and then the word please with black. I'm going to leave all of these little sponges out in case we decide we need another coat. Ooh. Oh, well, I am not doing well there. Get it out of the way. Here we go. Um, if you spilled any, wipe it up so that way you don't get it on the back of your door hanger, which is easy to do. By the way, the back of your door hanger was roll painted with exterior, um, exterior white paint. So it is good to go. Now, when you're done gluing all your other pieces on, you might want to, not might, if you're putting it outside like a door hanger or not inside the house, or you don't have a storm door or something, You'll want to spray everything with a clear coat. All right, so open up your other pouch of white. I'm going to squeeze it on. I'm just going to do a little bit like that because I tend to over squeeze and then I got got too much now and I'm having to spread out. This one is going to get a bow, which I know some of y'all, because I have heard, have a love-hate relationship with the bows. Like, you love having them done. You hate being the one to do them. So, I will try to be slow and clear with our explanation tonight. Oh, better move that. Otherwise, I might accidentally get some white paint on that. I'm not always the neatest painter. I mean, I'm fairly neat because I do it enough. You get kind of a little more careful. Without really even thinking about it. I don't necessarily think about being neat. But I've been not neat and made too many mistakes where I've accidentally touch something else or spray paint on something else. They have done that too many times. They just kind of naturally get a little more careful. All right, I'm gonna squeeze out a little more. Plus I squeezed off like the excess that was stuck inside the foam brush. Let's see if that's enough. 
And like I was telling y'all before, do not worry about it. The lines are still gonna show through. Now they're not gonna show through like it looked when we first started painting. I mean, you don't want them to, you don't want them to be that dark. But you will still be able to see them. Gee, man. Almost. All right, not quite feeling thick enough around the edges down there. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Let's see if there's any other spots. I find that like around the edges sometimes I don't do as good of a job as I want to. I'm gonna add a little more paint, go around the edge. Plus the edge is actually the part of the white people see more. You know, because the middle is going to have all the words and the Adirondack chairs and all that cuteness. And, you know, the top's going to have the bow cover in it. But around the sides here and then, like, around the bottom, that's the part of the white that people really see. So I'm going to make sure I'm very happy with the thickness of my paint there. You, of course, can always do three coats. Ain't nobody stopping you from doing three coats if you want to. Alright, I'm pretty happy. Oh, look at that. How did I even do that? Paint on my Yeti. Didn't I just get done bragging about how like I'm pretty careful? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with that. Not so thick that it's going to take me 30 minutes to dry it, though, which is good. Ain't got time for that. All right. Um, and before you glue things down, you can obviously come back and do just like a little touch up kind of third coat if you want to, um, if you find any spots. So I'm done with my white. You can save it in case you decide you want to touch it up later. Dry off my fingers. Um, I'm gonna set this aside to keep drying. And let's get back to our, let's see, we got an Adirondack chair that's going to be fuchsia. Actually, I'm kind of running out of space there. Hey, we got a few new people joined us. Hello, hello. Oh, it's not fuchsia. I don't know if I had fuchsia. I hope y'all would have said something before I went ahead with that fuchsia. It's a beautiful fuchsia, but you should have. Y'all probably looking at your paint patches being like, what the heck? I do not have a fuchsia. Um, this color is called Golden Yellow by Anita's Acrylic Craft Paint. Um, this is what we're doing for the extra. There we go. Making sure I could see what y'all see. So. so I'm not uh, making it so you can't see everything easily. All right, just a little bit of yellow. I probably squeezed out too much like I normally do. Okay. 
And this is one of those, it's going to be up to you if you want to one coat it or not. Because it's kind of thick. Like, a, maybe not thick, but it's brighter. It's a pretty bright color. So even at one coat, still looks pretty good. I will probably second coat it, I think. That's what I'm feeling right now. I love this yellow. It's so pretty. It's a good summery yellow. Kind of hard to get a good first coat with this. That might lead me to definitely be doing a second coat. I feel like it kind of looks a little streaky. But sometimes it looks like that's when it's wet, but then it turns out it dries just fine. So if you're, we had quite a few people do the craft kit of the month that were new this month. So if you are new to the craft kit of the month, first off, welcome. Thank you. I am so happy to have you. This is one of the things about my business that I love the most and I'm super excited about growing. Um, so welcome. Thank you for being a part of it. And what I will tell you from personal experience when I used to craft before I started this business, I didn't do it that much because let me tell y'all, I was so hard on myself. I was like, oh, it looks horrible. Never mind. I'm just not going to do it. I can't do it that well. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me again. Um, but I have definitely discovered you are your own worst critic. And because I have, you know, customers, friends, whatever, that'll craft with me and they'll be like, oh, it looks horrible. I'm like, no, it really doesn't. So be kind to yourself. Also, finish it, then take a break and come back and look at it and be like, huh, what do I think? Should I fix something? Sometimes you come back to it an hour later or 24 hours later. And you're like, wow. Oh, you're doing all that bad. Sorry, I'm talking about my mouthful of a junior mint. All right. Um, last thing, that was just my little crafting pep talk for y'all, is we're going to do the black pieces. So the inside of this flower is black. You do want to be careful to not have a whole bunch of paint go over the edge as I just did that and globbed it on in there. Because it has to fit down inside this flower, so if you get a big old glob of paint on the side, it's not going to fit well. So the way you can do that is by dabbing it on and not putting a ton of paint on your sponge. So keeping it light as far as how much paint you have on there. All right, so keep it light, light, dab it on, then you shouldn't have any paint that kind of globs on. And that'll make it easier to fit down in there. All right, now I'm going to do the little balls at the end here. They have a name. Science people, feel free to chime in. I do not know their name. There we go. And please. 
And this pleats is so skinny that I am going to dab this one on too. So I'm not going to kind of wipe how I've been doing with a lot of the others. It's just so skinny. So I find that the super skinny pieces or the super delicate pieces, it's easier this way. And if you're watching the replay even later, or you're watching the live anytime, if I miss explaining something, please ask. We have done these craft kit of a month now for over a year. Uh, so sometimes I forget, you know, that because I've said it, you know, 13 times in different videos, I don't always remember to explain it every time. So please ask a question if you have a question. I am a former teacher and happy to answer questions. They can't be half as dumb as some of the questions I heard through my 14 years of teaching. Not that there's dumb questions, right? Y'all remember hearing that when you were in school? Mm-mm, that's not true. I was a teacher for 14 years. There are, I assure you, there are dumb questions. I mean, I would still politely answer them. Mm, I don't know, some former students might tell you, politely, Miss Wells, sometimes there's those a little sass. On occasion, once I got to know my students pretty well, I figured out who could handle the sass and who couldn't. All right, y'all, everything is on its first coat. Now we just need to check and see if I want a second coat anything. It would appear that brilliant me when I got the white paint on my Yeti. Also got it on the C from Beach and the A from Beach. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to really lightly cover that so it avoids me having to like do a whole second coat. Cause I liked the look of the first coat with the wood grain showing through. All right, we'll see if that's enough still looks good after it dries. <laughs> all right, I am happy with all the blues. Let's check on our corals. I'm really happy with the corals too. They look great. And actually the green's not bad. Um, I just think I want it to be a little bit brighter. So I am gonna second coat my greens. All right, so second coating our green Adirondack chairs. Cause it's almost like, man, I just want it second coated cause I like the brightness of this green. And you don't really get that brightness otherwise. No, I feel like maybe I'm a little bit less stepped up now. Finally, which is 820. We've been at this almost an hour. Finally, I'm feeling a little less stuffed up. I guess I wasn't stuffed up. That was the problem. I had a runny nose, so it was the opposite of stuffed up. The point is, I finally feeling like it's not so bad. And if y'all are going to stick with my craft kit of the month for a long time, y'all got to get yourself one of these. Just one of these plastic tables that you always paint on. Looks like this. You don't have to worry about getting paint on it. It's nice. If you've got the space to like just grab a corner. I don't have a huge house at all. I have a 1,400 square foot house. But both my boys are grown and out of the house. So that means uh, of our three bedrooms now two of them, which is nuts, I have two empty bedrooms. Um, so this corner of one of the empty bedrooms has now become my corner. So if you got a place you can snag yourself a little space, do it, it is awesome. To just kind of have a corner where you can leave all your craft stuff and got a table and um, that you can just, it just makes it easier to kind of do it whenever you want 
not feel like you got to pull everything out and then clean it all up when you're done and be careful because you're doing it at your kitchen table. But if that's all the space you got, girl, craft wherever you can craft. All right. I like that. That is brighter. I am happy I did the second coat. Oh, but I need to squeeze out a little more. Boop. That should do it. I'm gonna go to bed early tonight. I'll be ready for the workshop sale tomorrow. Y'all better make sure if you come to the workshop sale tomorrow that you say hello and tell me you are one of my DIY Divas group. I love getting to meet y'all in person. I'll also try to repost after the sale tomorrow to see if y'all heads up, like those of y'all who can't come tomorrow, if you're thinking of coming Saturday, I'll let you know kind of an idea of what's left, that sort of thing. Um, like if there was one thing in particular you wanted, like you saw those turquoise rectangle windows that I posted, like little decorative windows. Um, and for some reason they all get sold out today, whatever. I'll try to do like a quick, um, maybe like a video or something, post about what's left after today. I mean, I have no idea if three people are gonna show up or 300 people are gonna show up. Well, okay, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be 300. But I think I wanna second cut my yellow too. I don't know how y'all feel about that, but I want it to be brighter too. Y'all can stick with one coat or you can even three coat it because a third coat on that green or this yellow is going to make it even brighter. I don't think like the blue and the coral, you don't really notice as much a difference in the saturation of color when you put on extra coats. But with these brighter colors, you do the yellow and the green. So that's why I'm second coating them. Even though all I keep thinking about is my quesadilla I'm going to have for dinner after this is over. <laughs> Y'all ever that hungry that you just look forward to something? I'm so hungry. I'm looking forward to this quesadilla tonight. Hub's just placed an order. I heard him at our local little Mexican restaurant. So when I am done with my line, I'm having a quesadilla. All right, that looks pretty good. So of course you can end up putting exactly how many coats you wanna put. Um, I think I'm gonna be happy with two on the green and two on the yellow and one on all the others, especially the black is fine for sure. If you want to save any of these at this point, like go put that in some water. If you want to reuse the little paint sponges, go put them in some water. Um, I'm not going to reuse my paint sponges, but I am going to go stick this in some water real quick. Grab yourself a refill if you need it. I'll be right back and we're going to glue stuff on.
powder cup that I didn't get in the beginning, so I put that in there so I can reuse it. Now grab your round that you painted white. And we are gonna glue stuff on. It should be dry. Mine looks dry. If yours is not dry, grab a hair dryer or just wait a second. Come back to us. We're gonna glue stuff on now. Um, there are actually a couple spots of mine that still look a little damp. Now that I look at it in the light a little better. So I'm gonna take a break and do the ribbon first, actually. So grab out your green ribbon. I mean, yours is already cut for you. Not like this here. But you're gonna need your ribbon and your pipe cleaner. And we are gonna make a bow, two loops on each side, one center loop. All right, so get it all pulled out like this. We ready? You are going to flip this under and create the center loop. So this is the loop that goes in the middle of the bow. So that's why it's that size, right? And I'm gonna pinch it. The nice thing about this ribbon, and I do this on purpose for my people who do not like mango bows, solid color. So you don't have to flip it. Um, sometimes on some ribbons, like one side looks better than the other and so you have to flip it every time. All right, you're gonna create a loop, right? Like that, just by creating a loop. I'm gonna hold it here with my forefinger and then pinch it together. All right, so now in between my fingers, I have that all pinched, right? Thumb in the middle, pinched up here. And I'm gonna create another loop about the same size. I'm gonna grab it with that extra finger, pinch it in again, and I'm gonna take a look at it and see if I feel like, okay, are both sides the same size? If not, I might pull it out, make this one a little bigger, and then reprint pinch in the middle, right? All right, so you're holding it all together with your thumb in the middle, your other fingers on the back, all right, this is where a twist is a good idea. It helps the bow look better. It gets the ribbon going in the right direction. So you see how we've got this here? I'm just gonna do one, whoop, twist it over. And the reason I'm doing that is now the direction of this ribbon is coming this way so that when I do my next loop and I pinch, see how now that loop's sticking up instead of stuck directly behind the other one. If you can't handle the twist, <laughs> that's okay. It can be right behind the other one. And when we're done, it's wired. So you kind of like pull it apart and you make it work, right? Okay, but I've been doing these forever and I always add a twist, I can't help myself. All right, so this one, I do another little half twist. Still holding it in a pinch back here. This is where you're starting to get a little cramp in your thumb, right? If you're not used to this, your hands are like, what the heck? Create another loop, grab it again with that extra finger there, push it down, and pinch. All right, yours might look a little crazy. The only thing you have to worry about at this point is are my loops the same size? All the rest is gonna be able to fix with some twisty twisty and stuff. This is all wired, all right? So I'm pretty happy with the size of the loops. Grab your pipe cleaner. Shove it through where your thumb is, but leave your thumb there. All right, now with my left hand, that pointer finger is gonna take the place of my thumb. So that pointer finger takes the place of my thumb, and my left thumb takes the place of all those fingers I had stuck on the back. So that I can flip it over, pull this pipe cleaner around, and then pull it tight before you twist it. You see, I'm gonna like tighten it. And then twist twist. All right, grab your scissors. When this is done, you can rewatch this, all right, if you need to. If you hate your bow when we're done, untwist, start over. But I promise you, you can do a lot of work to a bow here by just like kind of pulling on this and tugging on that. Like you can do a lot of work to a bow after you've already got it all together to make it look how you wanna make it look. 
right? So there's my bow. I like the top two pointing up like that. Just gives it a little, little whimsy. All right, so there's my bow. This is gonna go through the two holes on the top of your door hanger, um, which now should be dry and hopefully we can glue. So grab out your glue pouch and one of your sponges. If you do this enough with me, you might actually want to, let me move it a little bit. So I feel like y'all just see my hands the whole time. I'm like, I promise there's a person over here. Um, but sorry, my nose is itching. Um, you might want to actually buy yourself some of this. Not because I mind packing up and sending it to you every month, because I do not. Um, but it does make it easier to squeeze from the end. Even get one of the smaller bottles, um, dollar and a quarter tree even sells wood glue in these small little bottles. Um, because then you don't have to use the sponge. And as long as you're careful and don't squeeze out a ton, you can do like a thin line across the whole back. And it does make it much faster to glue instead of having to squeeze it out of a pouch. Um, I gotta pull this glue off the top here. But instead of having to squeeze it out of a pouch and put it on with the sponge, it is easier um, take it from somebody who has glued a lot of door hangers together. It is easier to do the glue directly from the glue bottle. Y'all all wanted to watch me try to get this glue out of here, didn't you? That's what y'all came here for, I know. Oh, come on. Man, this one was extra, extra. Usually, I'm pretty good about keeping them clean enough. There we go. We'll see if that's going to squeeze some out. Yep. So, um, if you do this enough, or if you get my DIY kits, right, not just the craft kit of the month, right, you might want to get one of these so that across the back, you can do, like, thin lines with the bottle you'll get better at like how much pressure you can use because you still don't want to put a bunch that is a problem and if you get a little glob sometimes you gotta wipe it off smooth it out but i just did all of that pretty quickly right so if you do this enough get your own bottle instead of using the pouches i mean i will keep sending them just in case you need them and you are more than welcome to use them all right, so let's get our round, and we are going to glue stuff on. I already glued the back of that chair showing y'all how that works, so I think we need to stick that chair on. All right, um, this is the same color as the beach across the top. <coughs> so, like, in our original one, that we did, that I took all the pictures for and everything, it is the second chair over. I'm gonna do it the same way just because um, you can put it obviously in whatever order you want. If you don't see the lines well, get under like a really bright light, like maybe a kitchen table light. I got this ring light on my video recorder thing, which is pretty bright. So it helps me line up, if I can see all the edges there in the bright light, helps me line it up. And I can push it down. There we go. And I'm going to do the yellow chair on the left of it. It's dry. Yeah, you don't want to glue anything on that's not dry because in order to glue it on, you got to kind of push it down, right? So you don't want to be pushing down on something that's still got wet paint. And for all of y'all who are new to this, you want a thin layer of paint. You do not want a lot at all. So you kind of dab it on, spread it around, where you can almost not see it. Like you just really kind of see the sheen of it, but you don't really see the glue itself. If you can see the glue, you probably got too much and it's going to squish out. Trick if it squishes out. Grab yourself a pipe cleaner if you got an extra one around your little craft space. They are great for wiping up squeezed out glue. I fold it in half like that. And then like if it's squeezed out here, I just wipe along the edge. So hopefully that helps. 
Um, that's just one of my little tricks that if I ever put too much glue and when I push it down, I see it squeeze out, grab a pipe cleaner and I wipe off around the edge, little fuzzies pick it up, the wire behind it helps you get in the corners. And that is a great way. So there's how much glue I put on. All you really see is the sheen. You should not see a lot of like actual glue. Don't want it all blobbed up. All right, putting on my yellow chair. Then I'm gonna put on my coral chair. line it up. I usually try to just kind of look on the left and like line up from there. So I'm lining up that little part of the armrest and then the bottom left leg. And it's kind of like if you get those two things lined up, then when you push it down to the right, everything else should kind of come together, which it does. If you have one that's not sticking down well, like it's a little warped or something, which can happen, um, You'll want to put a weight on it. Grab yourself a soup can or a paint bottle or like, so this coral one seems like it's not quite sticking down here. I wasn't loving the way it kind of felt like it was popping up a little bit. Everything else feels good. So I'm just setting that on there for now. All right, let's do our green one. So I am working, of course, on ideas for the next craft kit of the month. Um, I usually don't make a decision until like the day before I'm supposed to release it, which is the 20th of every month. So of course, you know, it's the 16th, so I haven't made a decision yet. Um, and I was going to go with something that's not a door hanger because the last two months we've done door hangers. We did our Freedom and Flip Flops door hanger and then we're doing this Beach Please one, right? And I thought that was okay to do two door hangers in a row there because they were kind of different ones, right? One's patriotic and one's just summer. Um, line it up, top and bottom, push it down. Um, I have found some really cute patriotic decor and I'm hoping y'all are gonna love that idea because I think that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, so it's something that we can, can be used on a porch, in the kitchen, like be a cute little hanging decor, and it's gonna have some little like fabric strips and stuff. Like I wanna try something a little different. Uh, I think that's what I'm leaning towards. Well, I mean, I know that's what I'm leaning towards. I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and put the flower on. Let me double check and make sure this is going to fit inside of it. Oh, uh, y'all. <laughs> Did I paint the wrong side? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, well, that could have happened. But yes, it fits. Yay! Okay, so take that out. I am going to glue on our coral flower. More glue, please. Yeah, so I hope you guys are cool with the patriotic decor sort of idea. It's one of those cute things too. Like I remember back in the day, my mom used to like, like hang cute things on doorknobs, right? Like it's gonna be something kind of like that size that could be hung from a doorknob or a, hung in a window or something, you know? Like you can hang it from the little, little lock on the window, that sort of thing, or even put a little hook in the window. Don't forget to put glue down here on the little part that we painted black. Science people tell me what that's called. All right, let's line this up. And looks pretty good. I'm gonna drop it down. Kind of shift it a little bit if I need to. That's part of the reason I like wood glue instead of like hot glue or super glue. Uh, Cause that's like, once it's down, it's down. 
It's too much commitment for me. I need a little bit of wiggle room. All right, let's put our little inside of the flower on. Give it a little push so it doesn't pop out on you. All right, leaves. Um, the leaf with the little point here, right, you've got two of them. This one goes on the left, that one's going to go on the right. You can go back and look at the picture if you need to, but here we go. So this one fits in under that, or sorry, in between those two little petals, all right? And this other one fits over here, kind of around, around that one petal. All right, so make sure you figure out where they go. I did not etch lines for the leaves. Things that kind of fit like that, I try not to etch lines and because every line I etch, right, just takes a little bit longer on the laser. The more time it takes, you know, to make it, I have to just worry about costs for the craft kit of the month. Unfortunately, cost of lots of things are going up. So one way I can keep costs down on the craft kit of the month is I only etch the things that are totally necessary because if it takes less laser time, that means I can cut more things, which helps keep costs down. So fit that other one just kind of around the petal there. Y'all, I love this flower. It's the cutest thing. I also think I just now realized, yeah, that's a dog fur. <laughs> Thankfully it came off <laughs> in my door hanger. Love it. Looked like a brown one. Pretty sure it was a Jeffy one. Can easily identify them. We got one white pup, one brown pup, one black pup. And you know who it comes from. All right. Now this is, yeah, good and stuck down. So I'm going to remove my weight from that. And we are going to put our beach please on the top. Also, I cannot help but say it like that. Hope y'all are with me too, and every time in your head you think of it as beach, please. Because that's how I do it. All right, wipe off my finger there. Got a little, oh, almost dropped it. <laughs> Save. All right, a little outline for the P. And for our leaves. And you're just going to dab it on nice and thin, but everywhere, right? So you want to cover all the surface, but you want to keep it thin. All right, line that up. Now this one is seeming like it doesn't really want to stick down. I put it in the right spot, but the E's trying to pop up. Let me give it a good push, see if it's going to stay. I think it is. Sometimes all you need is just the, um, like the glue itself. No, now my L wants to pop up. So let's be sure. I'm going to put a weight on that real quick. Soup can, soda can, any of that stuff. You usually don't have to be something super heavy. Just double check it and make sure it's actually holding it down. All right, I'm going to flip it around. So I'm going to glue my beach on upside down because I'm just that talented. This is an advanced move, people. I'm going to glue the beach on upside down. Not everybody can do this, you know, but feeling a little punch drunk and hungry. Doing it. All right. Here's our B. Wipe my finger off because I just put glue on it. And our E. As you're gluing, especially if you're new at this, you might not think of it, 
just continually check back on your other pieces you just glued down just to make sure you know all the corners really stuck it doesn't need like an extra push so just go back and double check your chairs the windows the leaves Shadow there was making it hard to see. Where the outline is. There we go. I got it. A little more glue. Um, also, for those of y'all that are new to the craft kit of the month, if anything ever shows up broken or missing or not enough let me know we will quickly resend it's just gonna happen with as many of these as we ship sometimes something's gonna break and i will make it right for sure just send me a message all right looking good Everything's sticking down well. Oh, sometimes too, if you're new at my DIY kits, you don't realize until you get to the glue it down part that you painted the wrong side of something. <laughs> so if you're ever unsure, I mean, you usually can tell the back because it's got a little bit of smoke marks from the laser. The front will never have that. Um, but if you can't tell for that, grab out your round and line things up with the outline. Like things like a C obviously could be flipped, right? Um, so look at the outline and that'll help you know if you're painting the front of it or accidentally painting the back. Like the flower, I knew because I've cut enough of these, I know what the back looks like, right? But I forgot to point that out. If you're ever unsure, just grab out the etched round and see how it fits on there. Okay, I think I am done. Boop -ba -doo -doo. Let's see if this is holding. Yes. Okay, I'm probably going to put the weight back on it when we're done, but I just can't wait to like show you final product. Oh, we got to tie our jute on too. I guess I could leave the weight on while we're tying jute. All right, so your jute's already cut for you. I have this big old string over here. You're gonna put your jute through the holes. It's easy to put it on the edge of your table. Pull it through, and then you're gonna tie yourself a double knot, one and then two. Pull it tight, so as you pull back like this. Right, pull the sides, pull the ends, get it extra tight. You do not want it coming undone. And then the last thing you can do um, is put on your bow. Also, again, easy if you just got it hanging off the end. I like the little ones that stick up to go at the top. I don't want to cover my beach anyways, and I just like a bow that looks that way. I feel like it's a happy bow because the loops are sticking up. So stick that through the two holes, pull it through the back, and around the back, twist the pipe cleaner around itself. No need to tie a knot, because it's a pipe cleaner. Just twist it around itself a couple times. Let me show you that, right? So that the pipe cleaner has just been twisted around itself a couple times. And you are done. Look, I'm so cute. Okay, right y'all, I cannot with this, it's so cute. Beach please, it's so cute. 
All right, so obviously I am a bow fluffer. I cannot help but continually fix the bow. The only thing you need to still do with your adorable new day, door hanger, two things. One, spray it with a clear coat. I like Rust-Oleum 2X um, from Home Depot. Sometimes Walmart has it. Um, any clear coat though, really, you get to pick your sheen. If you want it to be glossy or satin or matte, you can pick. Spray with a clear coat. Second thing, take a picture of you and your lovely door hanger. Post it on the DIY Divas group. I want to see you with your door hanger. Um, I'm going to see your smiling faces because y'all doing this is what is the best part for me. Because I could sit and do these quietly in my workshop, but I do the live because I love the craft kit of the month and knowing that y'all are out there being your crafty self, getting a little craft in therapy, um, and it just makes me happy to know that that's what's going on. Um, so please share a picture, make me even happier. Um, I would love it. Post a picture of the DIY Divas group. My husband came back from picking up Mexican, so I got a quesadilla waiting for me. I hope y'all enjoy your own dinners. Me and my quesadilla though are about to go get it. Beach please, y'all have a great night. Love you DIY Divas.